Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be quickly revised under this lesson are Electric current, current density, Ohm's law, resistance and resistivity, resistors in series and parallel, cells EMF and internal resistance, cells in series and parallel, Kirchhoff's laws, heating effects of current, measuring currents and voltages using ammeter, voltmeter, potentiometer, Wheatstone bridge and meter bridge and a lot of multiple choice questions at the end. So we'll start with electric current. Now as we have already learned that current is the rate of flow of charge through a cross-sectional area of a conductor. Now what exactly do we mean by that is current which is normally denoted by I is equal to charge flowing per unit time where Q represents the charge and T represents the time taken for these charges to flow. So the amount of charges flowing per unit time is current and current is generally denoted by I, a capital I rather. Now this scenario is true for steady current. But does that mean that current would be steady at all times? Not really because current might not be steady at a lot of times. So what's the scenario then when current is not steady? So in that case we might talk about something called average current. So what do we mean by average current? Okay, so now when we say that the current is not steady, that basically means that at each instant of time, there are different rates of charge flow. For example, let's say that we are talking about a time frame from time t to time t plus delta t. Okay, so we are talking about the instants between these time from t to t plus delta t. Now at every instant of time in between in, in this time interval, so at t1, let's say that q1 amount of charges flow, at t2, q2 amount of charge flow. So basically at every instant t1, t2, t3, t4, the rate of charge flow is different and therefore the current at each of these instants is different. Right? So in th this scenario, we would say that the current is not steady. So this is what we mean when we say that current is not steady. So under such situation, if we want to know what is the average current that had flown in a particular time interval. So how do we calculate that? So average current in that case is equal to the total charge flow in the time from t to delta t that means within this time whatever is the total amount of charge that had flown so we do not bother about the amount of charge which had flown at t1 or t2 at t3 so the total charge that had flown in this time interval that is in this time delta t let's say that the total amount of charge that had flown is delta q so we say that i average that is average current is equal equal to delta Q by delta T because how much is this time from T to T plus delta T that means basically this much time is nothing but delta T so delta Q charge had flown in time delta T so average current is delta Q by delta T so you understand what is average current so the average current concept comes into picture when we are talking about non-steady currents okay now with average current comes another concept of instantaneous current because we saw that at each instant of time the amount of current that flows is different. So if we want to calculate the instantaneous current at a certain point in time, so how do we calculate that? So basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to say that instantaneous current is nothing but this current that is delta Q by delta t such that delta t tends to zero that means delta t is very very small like in this case delta t is this much time right so starting from t 
2t plus delta t. This much time is delta t. So when we talk about instantaneous current, we are talking about the current in this instant. Again, the current is this instant. So basically, we are talking about a very small instant of time. That is delta t tends to 0. Now, by definition of differentiation, we know that limit delta t tends to 0, delta q by delta t is nothing by, but dq by dt. So this is from our basic knowledge on differentiation. So we can say that I instantaneous is equal to dq by dt. So these are the three, uh, three forms of current that we talk about. If it is steady current, we just say q by t. Uh, if it is non-steady current, we talk about instantaneous current, which is dq by dt. We talk about average current, which is delta q by delta t. And I hope you understand the difference between the two by now. Now, how do we measure current? So the unit that is used to measure current is ampere, which is written as A. So one ampere is equal to one coulomb per second. So one ampere is defined as uh, when one coulomb of charge flows in one second, then the current is said to be one ampere. Okay, so now current as such is a scalar quantity. Now, there are a lot of questions which are raised on this that why is current a scalar quantity because we often talk about magnitude of current and we also talk about direction of current that current flows from the positive end towards the negative end like we talk about the electronic current, we talk about the conventional current, right? Conventional current means the flow of the positive charges and electronic current means the flow of the negatively charged electron. So we talk about direction of flow of current. Then why is current a scalar quantity? That's because we do not add current as vectors because normally vector quantities will be added as per the vector law of addition. But for currents, we add them as scalar and therefore electric current is a scalar quantity. So this was just an introduction to the revision of this chapter on current electricity. Let me quickly tell you that in this video, we will just do a quick revision of the entire lesson on current electricity uh, from the perspective of uh, medical entrance examinations. However, if you want to learn this chapter in detail, if you want to learn the concepts in very much detail, then please refer to the videos of physics of class 11th on examfear.com. Okay, so moving ahead with the next topic, which is current density. So what is current density? It is charge flowing per unit time, per unit area, normal to the direction of charge flow at that point. Now, the, the definition seems very complicated as usual, but it, it's quite simple. So normally we denote charge density by capital J, which is a vector quantity. So that's important. Current is scalar quantity, but current density is a vector quantity. So this current density is nothing but current per unit time, per unit area. Or we can say that current is equal to J dot A. That is dot product of the current density vector and area vector. So that is how we define the relationship between current and current density. And if you talk about now, as I said, that current density is a vector quantity. So obviously it has magnitude. And if you talk about its direction, the direction of current density is equal to the direction of current flow. Okay. Now, when you talk about this area vector, a lot of question again arises in your mind that what is this concept of area vector because we normally know that area is a scalar quantity. So what is area vector? So let us take this example. Now to understand the concept of the area vector, let us try to understand this with this example. So here we see a dart board and the arrows for the spot dart. So you just look at these three scenarios. In the first scenario, you see that the board is held at perpendicular to the direction of the arrows. So what happens in this case? You see that all the arrows, they hit the board. 
In the second scenario, the board is kept at a certain angle. So the board is not exactly perpendicular to the movement of the arrows. So in this case, what happens? Some of the arrows, only three out of six hit the board. Rest of them do not hit the board. Now, in the third scenario, we place the board along the direction of the flow of arrows. So, in this case, what happens? We see that none of the arrows hit the board. So, what's happening in these three scenarios? So, let's say this is our case 1, this is case 2 and this is case 3. Now, let's see what was happening in each of these cases. So, the first case was the one where the cross-sectional area, that is here, the board represents the area, the orientation of the area and these arrows, they represent the current flow, okay? Current flow or you can say that they represent the flow of the charges because the direction in which the charges flow represent the direction of current in a way, right? So let's assume that these arrows are the direction of current and the board is the cross-sectional area of the conductor, okay? So in case one, the cross-sectional area is perpendicular to current, right? Because this is the direction of current and this is the cross-sectional area. So the cross-sectional area is perpendicular to current, right? So we can also say that normal to the cross-sectional area, this is the area, but if you draw a normal to the cross-sectional area, so that normal would be along this line. So basically normal to area makes zero degree to the current, right? So what's happening here is if you look at the equation here, because we have learned that current is the dot product of current density vector and area vector. So therefore, J dot A, what does this mean? J dot A is basically J A cos theta, where theta represents the angle between the area vector and the current density vector. So that angle in this case, theta in this case is zero degree. Why? Because the theta, now this, please understand that this theta is not the angle between the area and the direction of current. Rather, it is the angle between the normal to the area vector and the direction of current. So therefore, theta is equal to 0 in this case and cos 0 is, is equal to 1. So therefore, I is equal to JA or you can say that current density is equal to current per unit area. So this is true in case 1. But if you look at case 2, we see that the cross-sectional area makes an angle theta to the current. Because here it is not 90 degree, it is some angle theta to the current. Right? So in this case, what is the scenario? So in this case, if you look at the same expression, it would be I is equal to J A cos theta or you can say that current density in this case would be current per unit area cos theta. So basically not in all the cases current density is equal to current per unit area. So whether it will be current per unit area or it will be current per unit area multiplied by cos theta that depends upon the orientation of the area. So here we are not only bothered about the magnitude of area but we are also bothered about the orientation of the area. So that is why this is called area vector and not just area because normally area is a scalar quantity. But here since we are also bothered about the orientation of the area with respect to the flow of current and that is why we are considering you know the normal to the area and looking at the angle which it makes with the current flow so since the orientation of area is also playing a role here so this is area vector in the third case if you see what is the value of theta so in this case the cross-sectional area makes zero degree to the current because the cross-sectional area lies along the flow of the current so therefore normal to the area so the normal to the area would be in this direction and let's say that the current is flowing in this direction so the normal to the area makes an angle of 90 degree in this case so therefore theta is equal to 90 degree in this case and therefore I will be equal to J A cos 90 and cos 90 is equal to 0 therefore I is equal to 0 and therefore the current in this case is equal to 0 as you see here 
none of the arrows hit the board. So basically that's, that happened because current is equal to zero. Similarly, in this case, if you see the current was lesser and in this case, the current was maximum. So you see the amount of current or basically current density, whatever you call it, that changed as the or orientation of the area changed. And that is why that is where lies the concept of area vector. So current density is basically equal to charge current per unit area. Now here in the definition it says charge flowing per unit time which is nothing but current. So basically current per unit area is current density and when we talk about the direction of current density we say now okay now when we say that it is current per unit area we make sure that we mention which is normal to the direction of the charge flow at that point. So this definition applies for case 1 when the area is normal to the direction of the charge flow. You see area is normal to the direction of charge flow. In that case current density is equal to current per unit area. But when they, it is inclined at some angle theta then theta also comes into picture. So I hope that this is clear now. So current density, so you can say current is equal to dot product of current density and area vector. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.